Welcome everybody. My name is Randy Howell with Trader State of Mind. And today what we're going to be looking at is how do you actually go about developing interior discipline? And the first thing that really has to happen in order to, to, for you to achieve that is you're going to have to learn how to master your fears. So that's what the whole programming that we're going to be looking at. And how do you, you know, and we, we're going to be taking a look at what actually stops you from achieving success in trading. And then once you grasp that, then you go about asking an even more powerful question that's really difficult for traders. How do you change? How do you change? And in particular, what we're going to be looking at is your psychology of uncertainty, how you approach uncertainty, and what happens is when you engage into the ambiguity of uncertainty, because that is trading. Before we go, though, I would really like to appreciate and show appreciation for Vicki and Maude. FX Street is a great, great, great company. I want to let you know that. They, they want their traders not just trained on methodology and platform. They want to make sure that they actually develop the mind that can trade off that. Very few folks do that. So I really, um, this is a great place to learn. Lots of educational opportunities. But let's really look at this, okay? Let's really look at this. Let's actually take a look at what goes on. And here's actually one day a trader came up to me when I was speaking at a uh, at a trade show, and he came to me and showed me this business card. And on the business card, he literally had a photograph of a ton of gold. And what he said is, "My vision is to become worth a ton of gold." And I looked at him and says, "That's great, that's great." And I asked him this question: Who do you need to become? For that to become a reality. The truth is, the mindset that you have brought into trading is not the mindset that will bring success in trading. You know, it's not your methodology that trades. It's the mindset that trades your methodology. And it's really interesting because ultimately what will happen here is this, is people will invest a lot in their platform and their methodology, they will get equipped to trade. But there's only one problem with this strategy. You still bring a mindset trading that doesn't learn and teach you how to manage uncertainty. That's the whole key, and that's where we're going to be going. So let's take a look at it first. If you understand it's the beliefs that you're bringing to the uncertainty that's going to build the probability of success or failure. Here's what you need to look at. As long as you're avoiding examining and redefining your beliefs about the management of uncertainty, you're not going to become the driver of the methodology and platform that you've got that needs to, needs to be there to produce success. Also, what really great traders come to understand is what all great teachers of methodology come, is that 80% of trading is in your head. And believing that discipline can be found outside the self by tweaking your systems to remove uncertainty proves to be folly. You know, ultimately, you are the Holy Grail. Ultimately, you are what has to be tweaked. It is your belief that you are bringing to uncertainty that are trading. This is powerful. The other thing that really blocks people is this, is they end up in a self-limited script that they bring from whatever place in the world they were in in their histories and they bring it to trading and they stay stuck there because they refuse to change. They, and out of that, they become prisoners to an effect, ineffective emotional and psychological trade discipline. This is the place that we're going to be looking at. And what we're going to do, we're going to start in the beginning. What actually produces effective trading? First of all, hopefully everyone in here has a platform that serves them well. And hopefully everyone in here has a methodology that has proven that if you bring the right mind to that methodology, gives you an edge and can produce success in trading. Most likely, what you can do is you can sim trade successfully. The problem is that when you go live and risk enters and uncertainty enters, this is where the self limiting beliefs are exposed of your psychology. So the thing is, is without developing the psychology, 
you waste a perfectly good methodology and a perfectly good system. This is what we want to look at, is how do you go about developing this last part of trading that most people do everything they can to not get close to. The truth is, when you start looking at your psychology and you're realizing there's something about the way you perceive things that is not helping you, what you want to do is avoid it. You do not want to change. You ha there is a profound fear of change, and we make up all sorts of excuses about not changing. The truth is, though, in trading, unlike in many other areas of life, is your beliefs are tested about how you can use that methodology. They're tested by your trading account. If it's growing, then your beliefs that you're bringing to your methodology are effective. If it's not growing, if you're hesitating, if you're blowing things up, if you're gambling, my promise to you is that your beliefs are showing up, and no matter how much you try to hide from them, it's still not working. And it's getting into the psychology that we now turn, okay? And for me, in order to change, there really has to be a process. And it has to be really focused also on biology. The first thing, the five essential skills for peak performance trading, the ones that the really great guys really have found one way or the other. They might have been born into it. They might have just the, won the crapshoot with, um, with the genetics. It could be, who knows? But here's what happens, is they know how to emotionally regulate fear and impulse. Until you learn how to regulate fear and impulse, you're not going to get to mind. Okay? The second one is when you start realizing, I need to start taking a look at what goes on in my mind. The tool for that that has to be developed is mindfulness. And what I call it is developing a sense of observation where you step back and can reflect. More about that later. Then you wake up to all this chatter going on inside your mind, and you discover is that you better pay attention. Because that's not idle chatter. That's your internal dialogue. And what it's doing is giving voice to your belief. And friends, if you haven't got that down, if you, if you just are uncomfortable listening to your thoughts and beginning to confront them, it's going to be a tough ride. That is why mindfulness is so immensely important. The fourth thing is you begin to realize that there are enormously powerful inherent parts of the self that just simply haven't been developed within you. They're there because you're human. And as you learn to develop them, you begin to totally change the internal dialogue, the way you perceive reality and trading. You become more comfortable with uncertainty and learn how to manage probability. That's the essence of trading right there from a mental standpoint. The fifth thing is you have to become intentional about developing the internal dialogue for peak performance trading. People who go through my training, what they do is they literally, when they wake up, when they starting to prepare for trading, they kind of work through a mental checklist, checking things inside themselves, because they know if they're not finding the parts of the self that dwell in fear, then they know that they might as well not trade because it's going to blow up in their face. Those are the five skills. Now, what let's do Let's take each of these skills and break them down and take a look at them, okay? The first essential skill, emotional state management. First of all, before we even get to management, let's talk about what an emotion is. Because most people really don't have an effective way of understanding emotion, and without that, they're dead in the water. First of all, an emotion is not a feeling. An emotion, I'm going to give you a neurologically based definition here, and bear with me. It is any disturbance or deviation from a standard familial pattern that's already been established by the brain. Automatically, and if you want to know what that really looks like, is that you're sitting there minding your own business, you're just watching setups, and everything's just, you know, there's nothing there, the criterions haven't shown up, your symbols aren't there, nothing has really started getting warm. When it gets warm, that is a perturbation, that is a difference, and suddenly what happens is an emotion is going to trigger. What happens with most people is fear shows up of uncertainty or loss, and suddenly you have hesitation, and suddenly that finger is so hard to control trying to pull the trigger. So that's what an emotion is. Now, how does it look in the management of fear, and uh, actually, how does that look in trading? What it really boils down to, if fear is present, it is going to, if fear is present, it is going to hijack objective thinking, okay? Literally, 
fear will contaminate your ability to produce impartiality and to actually trade your plan. It'll do it, and it'll hijack your thinking. Then what happens is that fear triggers you into a fear-based herd mentality. This is where market makers start taking advantage of you. Then you and your trading becomes bonded to the 95% of the trading pack driven by fear. This is almost like American Indians running the buffalo off the side of a cliff. This is how, this is what it's like. Then you start making trading decisions outside of your trading plan based on avoidance or impulse. You're no longer trading your plan. You're trading from a position of fear, impulse, and you are going to be blindsided. And what happens is that then you transfer your capital, your hard-earned capital, to the 5% of traders who are disciplined and impartial. That's what happens in the markets. That's why traders will talk about, successful traders will talk about extracting money from the markets because what they know is that there is this herd out there driven by fear, and to do that, they can't think. They're thinking from a fearful standpoint, and it's easy pickings for them. The key is for you is to develop the skill base so that that doesn't happen to you. So now, now we kind of see what it actually looks like in the pattern. Let's actually look, what are the elements and emotions so we can break them down and see how you can begin to disrupt them, change them, instead of having this big, huge global thing called emotion. The first thing, an emotion is composed of five elements. One, arousal. That's the body cranking up for action. And I'll talk to you more about that a little later, but that's, that you will, it's a big one, okay? And one that you can really observe and you can have impact on. The second is motivation. Motivation is when you're hesitating or when you're an impulse, you're either attacking or avoiding. And boy, I want to tell you something. Once that part of the emotion kicks in, it is just toast for your mind. You've got to learn to regulate that. The meaning. Meaning becomes associated with an emotion as it embraces the uncertainty or the ambiguity of stuff. And suddenly, your idea, your belief about how you can prevail, about how you can negotiate the future of uncertainty are revealed. And most of the time, it's not pretty, particularly for traders who haven't really established a mindset that is effective in trading. The fourth thing, feeling. Feeling is the subjective experience of the emotion. It is not the emotion. It's just an element. And by the time you feel an emotion, what it, you're basically saying is the chemistry of the emotion has flooded your entire body, and it is completely present with you. Don't think you're going to say, ah, oh, there's a feeling. I'm just going to push it away. No, that's biological, my friend. It, it becomes psychological, and it's taken over mind. But when you finally feel fear, uh, that's about 45 minutes to an hour of burning off the chemistry of the fear to get back down to where you can produce a calm state of mind. That's what feeling is. Now, temperament. That's something I don't address in my training simply because it's genetic, and I can't do anything about genetics, okay? But there is so much more. There is so much more. So how does this all look when put together? What happens, this is the process of fear as an emotion in trading. The first thing that happens is there is something that produces uncertainty. You know, if you're in a trade or if you're looking at a trade about producing risk, you're there at uncertainty. Arousal happens. The body's beginning to be prepared for action or avoidance of a perceived threat. Your brain is automatically going to, uncertainty and fear are not delineated in your brain. You're going to have to learn how to do that, and that is psychological work. What you then notice is this short, shallow breathing or no breathing at all. And what you're doing at that moment, if you're doing that, you are cutting off the oxygen supply to the brain, which, by the way, cuts off your ability to think impartially. So just monitoring your breathing, learning how to manage it, what happens is you can begin to disrupt the arousal of an emotion so it doesn't hijack mine. The body becomes tense. Who in here has not felt his body, his jaw, his chest, his back, his uh, eyes just become really tense? Or those of you who have problem pulling the trigger, notice how tense your finger is. This is the body contributing to the, develop, to the arousal of an emotion. That's what it is. Suddenly, you also start noticing your heart pounding or it's racing. And you've got trouble now because if you're hearing the heart pound or race, what you're doing is you are you are taking adrenaline and cortisol. That's a stress 
hormones, and you are pumping them through the body, and, the, man, I'll tell you, the body is revving up to take over mine. This has to stop. At this particular moment in time, rational thinking is swept away by the ticking time bomb of fearful thinking. You are no longer the person who can trade your methodology and your system. What you are is a horse in a burning barn, and it's just going nuts. So, the one thing I want to do, when you see this stuff, you begin, wow, yeah, I can identify with this. Yeah, absolutely. Here's the part that has so much difficulty for a trader. This is the really tough one. This is when you have to develop a serious internal discipline and internal courage to be able to face your fears because inside that fear, there are four self-limiting beliefs about your performance, okay? One is the, the belief that you're inadequate, that it's never going to happen for you, you know? You're just not good enough. The second, not mattering. I just don't matter. You know something? I've really never mattered. You know, I just, I never, I can't do it. I'm unworthy. I'm not deserving of winning. Believe it or not, there's a lot of people who do that. And also, unworthy of, say, when a person starts becoming profitable, going from that level to the next level, their whole conversation about money and their worth becomes in play. The big one, powerlessness. Ultimately, when uncertainty triggers, there is a belief that you're powerless to have an impact. You want certainty, but the truth is that there is no such thing as certainty in trading. And the moment it falls to powerlessness, what you have is you have someone who believes they cannot prevail. And your trading account, not your opinions about yourself, is what is going to tell you the truth. The key you need to understand is this. To the emotional brain, the limbic system, all threat is a threat to life, the fear of death. You may be saying, oh, this is just psychological discomfort. Well, my friends, you tell the emotional brain that, and it's just going to spit it back at you. What it does is it's life and death. So, now, let's go now to emotional motivation. This is incredibly powerful. You will, you will feel this, and the thing you need to understand in emotion is this, is that it is emotion. Emotions are literally about motion, acting. There is an urgency to act, to compel you to go in a particular direction. And there are only three of them, three basic ones. Avoid, and if you produce hesitation, you know exactly what. People who have trouble pulling the trigger, this is it. This is you getting up and drinking coffee a lot. This is you answering your emails, thinking, oh, I think I'll talk to Sonny. I think I'll blah, blah, blah. Just avoiding the issue of having to deal with uncertainty. Attack. Anybody who's revenge traded, anybody who has had impulse problems, anybody who is over traded, they know what attack motivation is. It's a form of fear, okay? But the thing is, is anger, which is associated with this, is about diminishing the capacity of a threat to be dangerous to you by attacking rather than avoiding. That's all it is. The mindset we want to build is that of approach. This is where you have curiosity. This is when you are you can stay in steady state. This is emotional motivation, and this is what you've got to get to. Now, how does this all come to be in the brain and mind of a trader? First of all, here's the things you need to know. First of all, it is not your fault that you have fear, but it is your responsibility to do something about it. It's not your fault for had impulse or greed, but you better do something about it if you want to be successful in trading. Because here's the deal. Your brain, by evolution, by design, is a negative assessment machine. It is going to pick out and do negative assessment no matter what. That's its preferred way. And if you want to see that in action, just turn on the nightly news. When is the last time they had any good news on the nightly news? What they know, newspapers too, everybody, is that negative news is what draws attention. The brain seeks the negative attention. You've got to work on that. The big one, the huge one, that every trader has to be able to do, and this is the big one, and it's not, this is not going to come like as a magic wand. This is something that's going to require real work on your part, is your brain does not distinguish uncertainty from fear. It will never do it. To the emotional brain, the emotional part of the brain that controls thinking, any, any uncertainty is a danger to life. It is going to trigger and suddenly your clear thinking is gone. 
then it organizes you to avoid uncertainty, okay, as if it could, and fear by developing a comfort zone that you stay locked into. It becomes your prison. And again, you guys who have problems with pulling the trigger, you will know this comfort zone, this prison, very well. It won't let you out unless you learn to develop the tools and skills to get out of it. That's how you do it. Then, here's the real problem, is that these, this is what the brain's doing, okay? Based on this avoidance stuff, based on this uncertainty, it starts forming self-fulfilling patterns that are on automatic. And what they do is they are based on the avoidance of fear and uncertainty. Boy, this is a formula for disaster in trading, isn't it? Then those patterns are on automatic. They dominate your state of mind. You don't even see that you're having them, and you think they're your thoughts. And what happens is you do not perform in a level of peak performance within trading. What happens is you know how to trade, but you can't bring the mindset you need to be able to trade because you're locked in pattern. Then you're trading from avoidance or greed rather than calm impartiality. And right at that moment, there, there just simply is no hope. Okay. That's when, that's when you're transferring all this stuff. Now what I want to do, <clears throat> that little part in red that we went back, this, this is so vital. And if you want to see the process that, that the brain and mind actually go through, Okay, and the truth is your brain tries to seek certainty. It seeks certainty. Once it, once it, it doesn't have to be certain. It just simply has to have the feel of certainty and it locks it in as a pattern. And here's the deal. Out of uncertainty comes ambiguity, which your brain just doesn't like at all because it produces confusion. Confusion to the mind. Man, the one thing it's going to do, it wants any explanation to get out of confusion and it will, it will, it will create one. Hesitate. I need more confirmation. Oh my God. I have to get out right now before this thing blows up on me. I might not be making very much money, but you know, I feel the fear. I got to get out. And that confusion fear is triggered. If you think about it, what a military likes to do is on a surprise attack, they like to generate tremendous amounts of confusion. Because what happens in the moment of confusion, the other soldiers lose their ability to think clearly and they fall into fear. And then even a well-equipped, well-armed army is absolutely at a powerful disadvantage. The thing is, is you have no business going into trading, trading a very fine methodology and a good system without being able to have a mind that can be, is equipped for the uncertainty so it doesn't turn to confusion and the confusion doesn't go to fear. This is how powerfully this is important. And what I want to want to do, you know, the Hulk had a lot of problem with his anger, okay? And the truth is, interrupting the arousal of an emotion before it hijacks your thinking is the first line of defense. If you're holding breath or you're sh shallow breathing, if you've got tense muscles, your neck, your jaw, your eyes, if you've noticed you, that you become fixated, and your pulse is pounding, your increasing energy, your loss of clear thinking. What happens is this can be regulated. This can be regulated, okay? And this is the first line. This is where emotional regulation comes in. Because ultimately, you can interrupt the arousal and the motivation of fear or anger. And this is what gives the capacity for you to trade well. Breathing and relaxation, my friends, are the key. The key is in breathing, your breathing is an element of an emotion. Fear has either no breathing or a short, shallow breathing and not full oxygenation of the, of the lungs because the truth is your brain doesn't need oxygen to think clearly in fear. If you're trying to escape an enemy, you really want no thinking at all. You want reactiveness. In the same way, breathing also controls the uh, rate of heart rate. They have a, there's a, conciliatory relationship, the faster the breathing, it gets the heart racing. The heart racing gets the adrenal glands, glands all worked up. And before you know it, you got stress chemistry in there. And that's going to take you out of the game. So this is just breathing and relaxation. Also, if you interrupt the tenseness in your body, what happens is that tenseness is about fear. Who in here doesn't experience that tenseness when they're fearful in trading? You can you literally use just biomechanical skill like breathing and relaxation, to stop the emotion from having so much power over you. This is where you get control back over. 
That's emotional regulation. And the truth is, emotional regulation does not get you to the mind. By itself, emotional regulation will never work. But the thing is, the emotions have to be managed before you get to the beliefs of the mind. So you've got to, you've got to do some, you've got to do some work. But this leads to the second skill in the transformation of self, and this is mindfulness. With your emotions calm, you can approach the mind. Okay? It literally becomes mindfulness, literally becomes the window through which you observe the mind. Very important. And in Western culture, this is so not developed. In Eastern cultures, it's much more deeply developed. With mindfulness, this is a tool, the reorganization of the self. And in it, what you're doing is you're beginning to develop an observing step. If you have ever had the experience of, like, stepping back and observing, if you've ever had, you know, it's just like taking a step back, observing from a distance, and you see yourself very differently. This is observation. It has to be developed. And the key is, is with it, you get, you begin to understand something powerful is that you and your thoughts are not the same. You and your beliefs are not the same. There is always an observer, a witness of thought and belief, developing it so that it's separate from the thought and belief, not fused, allows you to begin to truly learn how to harness the mind. So, in mindfulness, you're becoming aware of the embedded biases, the self limiting beliefs and thoughts that drive your perception without you knowing it. Often this is a historical conversation that you got born into and it just has taken over, but you can change it with mindfulness. The big thing with mindfulness is recognizing that you and your thoughts are not the same. You don't have to start identifying, I am this, I am this. What, what happens is you begin to say, wow, I see the thoughts, I see them arising, I'm seeing them have a life, I see them receding back into the ocean of possibility that my mind is. So, what ultimately happens with an observing self, with mindfulness, you become witness to the coming and going of thought. And this, friends, is when you really begin to develop the capacity of escaping from your historical pattern. This is when you begin to realize some basic truths. One is that your brain adapts you to the historical circumstances into which you're born. Okay, for better or worse, whatever. It doesn't really matter. That's what your brain does. Before you can think, your sense of self is organized for survival about around these identity influencing factors. They go on automatic. We become blind to them. And they become our identity without us ever being aware of them. You do not have beliefs and thoughts. They have you. And my friends, you trade your beliefs. So reorganizing, reorganizing your sense of identity around higher functioning sense of uh, who you are becomes vital. You have to escape. Usually most people, most traders, have to escape the historical dialogue that they were born into to develop a new way of seeing the world to become, sensible, to become successful traders. This is just one of those things. This is how you develop as a trader. That's all. So mindfulness simply is a tool. Okay, because ultimately, with mindfulness, you're bringing self-limiting beliefs into the light of awareness. Powerful, my friend. Powerful, powerful, powerful. And if you've ever had the experience of reviewing your trading day and why you keep doing the same stupid things over and over again and contrary to your trading plan, it's this, mindlessness. You start developing mindfulness and it goes away. So the third skill, you begin to observe the internal dialogue. Yeah, huh? All those thoughts running around in your mind are not idle chatter. That's the internal dialogue. And Zen Buddhism and mindfulness study out of Harvard, like it was Cabot Lodge, is what you're learning is this, is that internal chatter is just simply the voice of the beliefs that are showing up in mind. And it has great, great, great substance. We need to learn it if you want to become a great trader. And what ultimately you need to get is this, is your self-limiting beliefs and the emotions that they are tied to are given voice in the historical internal dialogue. This is when you really have to muscle up. You have to realize, oh, there's some things I'm not going to want to see in here. I'm not going to like. However, these are the areas that need to be changed. These are the that need to be disrupted. 
healed and changed for you to develop a new way of being in the world. And for those of you, the thing is, friends, is this, is this is something you're born into and your brain adapts you to. It's not your fault, but it is your responsibility to overcome and to redevelop your beliefs, to redevelop your mind that can trade effectively. That's the deal. Anybody can do it unless there's something really wrong. So the real thing is how do you tune into the self-limiting beliefs and shoot that internal dialogue, okay? This keeps us with level with this third skill we've been talking about is when you begin to discover and disrupt the internal dialogue. How many of you have been like this guy in this photograph where you're going, you're beating yourself up, you're so sick that I made the same mistake again and again. I'm never going to make it. Rah, 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 rah. The thing is, is we have to become an observer of the hidden thought life of your beliefs. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to make, we're going to, we're going to bring them out. We're going to let you see them. We're going to let you find out what's what inside your mind. What I want you to do, internal dialogue, there's always at least two elements. There is a protagonist and antagonist part of, uh, part of the dialogue. The historical internal dialogue is going to produce an inner critic. You remember me telling you about that the brain itself is a negative assessment machine? Well, this is the way it shows up in the mind. And then depending on how your culture raised you up about what success is, how your family raised you up, what happens is you you discover that there is a judge living within you. You discover there is a criticism living within you no matter what happens. You know, the thing is, is you're not good enough. Or conversely, you will also have a thing where you're tempted and you're, you're go get it, go get it. It's, nobody's looking, get it, get it. So you, you can either fall into criticism, judgment, or temptation. That's the inner critic. This is an essential element of the self to learn how to observe. Okay? Now, here's the deal here. Now, this is, the, this is where, this is where it gets tricky. And this is where often we do a poll here. I'm going to tell you about the poll. There's one of these parts of the self that you adapt to that is big compared to the others. But I want to take you through this in your internal dialogue and pick, as I talk about this, pick the point you have most difficulty in while trading so that we can analyze this properly. Because what happens is this. is One, are you the self-doubter? That's the one that says, I can never win. It's going to be for other people, but not for me. Blah, 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 blah. Chicken Little, this is the one who has a hard time getting into trades. Everything is negative appraisal. I want more confirmation. Please, more confirmation. You get so much confirmation, but by the time you enter the trade, the trade's gone. Okay, that is Chicken Little. The gambler, don't leave any money on the table. I'm going to take it all. You're not going to listen to your target. You know, the thing is, is you'll move your target even though you go, wow, this is a great target. This is something I can take. You know, I'm just trying to extract something from the market. So I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to grab everything. The perfectionist, and friends, this is a big one. This is the one that says, I can't lose. I, I hate losing. And, you know, what happens is I must win every time. And, and you know, you know logically that when you get into trading is you're not going to win every time. As a matter of fact, the really, truly great traders are winning like 60% of the time, but they have a three-to-one ratio of winners to losers. What they know is probability. What the perfectionist within you, and this is a limbic brain situation, what happens is the perfectionist in you believes that in order to be good, in order to win, they have to, they can never lose. Oh God, I can't show that I make a, I can't have a mistake. And this is a part you have to retrain and it's difficult, but so necessary. This is where certainty, the brain's desire for certainty and life's propensity toward uncertainty come unhinged and you end up in hesitation and you don't win. So, there's also the entitled one, I deserve to win. I've worked hard. So what? The con, this is when you just keep lying to yourself. You just keep lying to yourself. The fraud, this is when you're actually pretending to look good in front of other people. I get a lot of this, uh, particularly when you start getting around chat r- rooms where people are trading in and they're, you know, you don't, you know, you don't want to be lonely, but, you know, trading is such a lonely thing is that, so you'll hook up with a bunch of people on the internet. And people are talking about how great they're doing, and you feel really bad because, God, I'm not doing so good. They're doing so great. The truth is 90% of them are lying. They're looking good as a virtual personality to you there. The orphan. If you have ever experienced fear in trading, you have experienced Carl Jung's archetype, the orphan. 
That's the one that feels like he's missing out. This is the type that is feared to take action. That is the orphan. Powerful, powerful element. Saboteur. This is the one that you put days, some good days, some good weeks, maybe in a couple of good months, and suddenly there's this little voice back in the back of the head going, oh, this is getting too good. You're going to blow it. That's the saboteur. The alpha. This is a lot of uh, American executives coming out of uh, American corporations where they are taught to win. Everybody submit. They have a goal, and what they're going to do is they're going to make that goal a reality. They're going to force that goal into being, that type A personality. And they get into trading, and they discover is that tra- the markets really don't care and that markets cannot be controlled. You cannot force the market. It takes a completely different mindset. What you're doing is you become going, well, what will the markets give me today? Very different mindset. The alpha blows up a lot because it's just not going to work. What I've done here is I've given you an idea of the trader's state of mind that comes into trading. Back in that one of those first slides, what happens is that we talked about the mind that you brought to trading is not the mind that is going to make you successful. This is the mind that we've just talked about here that you've got to overcome. Now, the truth is, the truth is, there will always be internal conflict, and it's going to show up as mental dialogue. And that, my friends, is going to reveal the organization itself that actually trades. You know, we've just gone through. If you see the shadow, what you're looking at is the inner critic. When you're looking at the guy there, what you're looking at is the adapted voice. And the question for you is, write it down. Nobody's going to see this, but you need to know in your trading what these two elements, how they dialogue within you in your most critical moments, whether or not it's um, looking at entry points, and freezing, or whether or not it's in the trade, or when, where, or whether it's when you lose or win, what conversation appears in mind. This is so vital because ultimately, a, tra- a state of mind that trades well is pretty darn level. And that brings us to the fourth skill. This is actually developing what I call a powerful committee of your mind. It's beginning to manage the internal game for profitable trading, and you awaken heroic elements of yourself rather than self-limiting self part. And this is, a, this is one of the most challenging elements for some people. If you're a really black and white thinker, this is going to be really hard. <clears throat> but if, you, if you're tuned in, if you begin to realize that you're, if you begin to view your mind as a trading committee and it's composed of various elements, okay? It's kind of like a boardroom, and the boardroom has a, has a, it wants to take the company one way, another element wants to take the company another way, and there's a fight. And one is very destructive, and the other is very empowering. And what you realize is that you have been asleep at the wheel. This is the mindfulness and mindlessness stuff. What you have to do is you have to start waking up and saying, okay, what are these elements of the self within me that I need to start looking at? Because until you do this, what happens is that the historical internal di- dialogue controls thinking. That's that inner critic and adapted voice. What we have to have are new elements of the self to show up and for you to have the strength and courage and discipline to start remanufacturing, reshaping that inner committee. And my friends, here's my promise to you. It's really finding something that's already there. In the same way that fear and judgment reside within you, they do. So do discipline, patience, courage, and impartiality. And in my work, I actually have two ways that I really uh, help a person to hone in on these elements of self. If you have a memory of where you've performed in the face of uncertainty and prevailed, what we do is we can mine those areas and teach you how to draw upon those resources that showed up. And what we do is we generalize it from that particular domain into the domain of trading. It's very powerful. Then if you've also, if you've ever been inspired by heroic character, like, for instance, um, Maximus and Gladiator are, are something like that where you feel something stirring. For me, it's Nelson Mandela. When I, I have an image of Nelson Mandela in me, and what happens is he inspires me. I feel, I feel that essence stirring in this me, and I will begin to say, well, I'm going to act from this position. I know that, I know that he did, and I know the same thing indwells within me. And I, I start using his memory as a way of finding that. 
So if you've got that, it's already there, and we've, we've, we're shown that you can develop those elements of cell. And what are you trying to develop? Well, the part of the self that you got to have for trading. First thing is you do have to have courage. You are going to have to slay your own psychological demons. You're going to have to have the courage to change. And that's actually what I've discovered with most traders is the biggest fear they have actually is change. They darn well know that what they're doing isn't working. They darn well know that it's not really their system. It's not really their methodology. It's the mind, the mindset they bring to trading that's the problem. And they will sit there and they they have fear of change, I, and it's something where I can't change, I can't change. And they stay the same, and they stay in the cycle of their suffering. And boy, will trading really let you know. Until you develop that courage, and understand courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is acting in the face of fear. This is what's required. <clears throat> then, in the same way that courage resides within you, so does discipline. Now, for those of you who do not have an American history lesson on you, is the, the picture here is George Washington. The United States would not exist without George Washington. Somehow his internal discipline, his internal sense of confidence, he was able to keep the ship afloat. He was able to get people to believe in him and inspire them, and he kept them focused on winning. And it's out of that, this, and this is where the United States came from. And what's interesting is he could have become king, but he decided not to very loyal ruler within the self that manages the committee. That's what the ruler does, manages the element of the committee. And one of the big ones that you have to develop is the sage. Here we've got Spock, where it's very rational. And the thing is, is that impartiality is an emotional state. It's not like you're trading from no emotion. It is you are trading from the emotional state of impartiality. It is really good for trading, whereas fear is really bad for trading. But this is an element living within you. You will have known this. If you're in trading and you'd like to study and you see all that stuff, you know that you have the impartiality as long as, as long as risk is not there and certainty is not there. What happens is managing, managing the fear allows you to trade from par impartiality. That's the sage living within you. The other part, there is also within us a caregiver, a nurturer that we really need to bring to trading. Instead of beating yourself up, who in here has found that beating yourself up has proven to be an effective way of becoming a better trader? I've never had anybody say that it is. What it does is it digs the hole deeper, and your fear just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. The key is, is when you bring compassion, particularly self-compassion, and begin to understand that there is suffering here and that you, you, you bring compassion to your fear and it transforms the fear. It transforms this orphan living within you from fearfulness to it knows that it's loved, it knows that it's cared for, and trading becomes a performance rather than, rather than a characterization of self. Very powerful. This is the, that's the game changer. So what does it actually look like in a, as we kind of approach this thing? Well, when you begin, these are the Jungian archetypes, and these are just simply inherent permanent, indestructible elements of strength embedded into the biology and psychology of your humanness. And they can be brought into awareness. Fundamentally, what happens in my work is I teach you to find the discipline through ruler, the patience through caregiver, the courage through warrior, the impartiality through stage. These become part of the trading committee. You bring them forth and they become part of your inter internal dialogue. This is what changes everything so powerfully. When you do this, this has come still five, where what happens, it becomes intentional. The truth is, one of the hardest things that humans have to do is to recognize that there is no, there is no permanent state of certainty and everything's fine. What happens is there's always internal struggle. The struggle has always been within you. You will always bring it to trading. The uncertainty is there. The challenge is there. The difference is the mindset that you bring to it. You're no longer bringing a myth that things should be all right. What you're doing is saying, no, things actually are in conflict. They're uncertain. I need to bring the state of mind that can manage this. That's the powerful part. So testing, trading becomes the testing ground of literally who shows up for trading day. And that's trained. It doesn't, doesn't come naturally. 
the truth is, by developing these parts of your personality, you change the committee of the mind that actually trades. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Anybody can do this. You are able to confront your fears from a position of strength now rather than weakness. You know this is uncertainty. You know that change is the constant. And what you end up doing is you transform your supplementing beliefs into life-affirming beliefs. You see through the eyes of ruler. You see through the lies, lies of knowing that you're worthwhile rather than having to prove yourself. Your internal dialogue changes its interpretation from uncertain, of uncertainty from ri- just fear to risk management of uncertainty and probability. That is the birth of a good trader. That's the birth. So... How do you go about doing this? One, you get all this emotional uh, regulation stuff. You really need to learn that. Second is you need to develop mindfulness. And when you really develop mindfulness as a tool, you start using mindfulness either through, uh, in my practice, the way I teach traders is I either use symbolic representation where I'm using uh, people who really stir you to inspire you, or I'm using memory retrieval so that we manufacture the memory so that you can bring strength forward. But then the difference between this and affirmations and pretending that uh, the bad guys aren't out there, what happens is you come equipped. You come equipped to deal with uncertainty. And what happens is instead of pretending the fear is not there, what you confront it and you push through it. And you will end up with the faith that when you push through the door of fear, when you get to the other side, the resources will be there for you to manage the situation. That's the mark. That's the mark of the great trader. Each person has this. And the way it really looks is this, is that you're born into this situation. You adapt to this situation. You adapt to how you're going to trigger through uncertainty and risk. Okay? Most still link uncertainty and fear together. And what happens is that you will have these self-learning beliefs, this current psychological organization of self, that's who trades in the uncertainty. And the truth is, if you go through this training, if you go through the good training and you realize you develop the emotional regulation, you develop the mindfulness, and you use it like tool, it's suddenly you move beyond attack motivation where your impulse is. You move beyond fear-based trading where all your avoidances are, and you move to mindful trading where you become purposeful, you become intentional about what elements of the self actually show up to trade. And that's what I want to talk about here because fundamentally, if you're blind, if you're staying in mindfulness, what you're going to be trading from is what's on the left. You're going to have this fear-based mindset that can merge over to impulsiveness. You are just doing mindless trading. You just don't know why. You keep doing the same stupid things over and over again and not waking up to what you really need to do to learn. And what you do is you stay unaware of the potential that lives within you. It's sad. It's tragic. And it doesn't have to be that way, my friend. There is another route. You can end up developing the psychology that leads to an emotionally regulated, calm, focused mindset. I call that mindful trading, where you have command of the internal dialogue. That internal dialogue becomes the trading committee. That trading committee, and inside this box, this committee, suddenly has a strong ruler there who is keeping the, keeping the place together. The inner critic's not allowed there. The fear of the orphan, you acknowledge, but it's taken care of through the, the soothingness, to the compassion of the caregiver. And what happens is that the warrior confronts the inner critic within you. You have the courage to do that. The sage is given the power, without the influence of fear, to trade plans. And what happens is good trading falls out of that. But there is an en- enormous amount of emotional regulation skills that have occurred for this to happen. And the real question is, um, do you want to learn? Do you want to grow? Do you want to grow into the trader that really truly can achieve the dreams that you have, like that guy who wanted to be worth a ton of gold? Do you want to become the person who can produce that success? Well, the key is, is wishing and hoping is not going to work. The skill sets have to be developed, or you may just get lucky. I'm speaking to the people who realize that, no, I'm going to have to develop the skill sets. Well, to be honest with you, I, I give you an offer here. I give you an offer. Is I have, this Wednesday, as a matter of fact, I'm starting a four-part webinar course 
it's highly experiential that goes through each one of these skills and shows you how to develop them. It meets for four consecutive Wednesdays and generally is an hour and a half to each two hours each session. And you're going to walk out, you're going to walk out equipped to trade. And to register, you just go to this friendly little place that's uh, right there. And right now, if you register before tomorrow night, you can get a hundred dollar discount and you can be part of this. And also, by the way, this is also going to have a forum where people are coming to it and discussing what's going on in the course with them. It's just an added part where I'm beginning to find that that's really necessary for learning. The other thing, and by the way, that, that's, the, um, that's the code that allows you to go to the website and be able to get the discount. The other thing, though, is there are some of you who will realize who will be able to hear what I've said and done today and recognize that this is something I need to do. And the most powerful way is through my individual course with me. And if you're, if you know you're ready to go, this is something I really encourage you to do. It's you just sign up for a free consult. However, there are other opportunities here. If you've never read my book, I would encourage that. Okay. If you just simply want to check things out, kick some tires and explore, go to my website. There's free articles. There's free uh, questionnaires. There's all sorts of stuff there that you can look at. There's videos about trader psychology. There's a wealth of information. People who go end up staying there, uh, gosh, they'll go through uh, seven or eight different screens exploring the different things, and they end up reading a lot of articles and learn good stuff. All of this is possible. So you can look, you can kick tires, or you can be a person who says, you know something, there's just so much confirmation I have. The truth is I need to develop the courage to act. And if you if you have the courage to act, I commend you. I commend you. So that's it. Are there any questions before we go? Um, it's powerful stuff. I know that I've said a lot by you. And here's the first question. Uh, can you explain your Mandela thinking, how he influences you? Yeah, um, this is a great question, by the way. And this goes into the very heart of uh, archetypes is that what I know that lives within me, I know I know that when confronted with severe challenge, I have seen myself overcome severe challenge. Uh, it took tremendous amounts of effort and courage to be able to confront myself. Nelson Mandela, understand, he was, in Harvard, he, he was born blue blood. His people were taken away, didn't have power. He's a, he was a Harvard-educated attorney that tried the legal system with the Offer Connors. That didn't work. He went to machine guns. That didn't work. Then he turned, uh, when they caught him and put him in solitary confinement for three years, and then 25 years of prison, what happened is that actually, that actually is where he found himself. When they thought they were breaking him, what he discovered was this, that he was captain of his own destiny. And when I see... When I see Nelson Mandela, as a matter of fact, I'm looking at a picture of him right now. When I see, I feel that stir in me. The truth is, is that it's in him. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you what. I'll explain it to you this way, my friend. It's a great one. This is his quote at his inauguration, okay? Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that most frightens us. You are a child of God. Your playing small doesn't serve the world. There's nothing enlightening about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us. It's in everyone. What happens is that what he's telling me is the same thing that allowed him to light up and change the world. That same power lives within me. And it just so happens that when I think of him, that aspect of me grows and it allows me to find that deep ruler, that deep discipline within me, that deep sense of compassion within me, that deep warrior within me. That's what I mean by that. I hope that answers it. Gosh, yeah, man, I'll tell you, he's, he's definitely heroic for me. The, uh, the question, what, I was being asked about Mandela and how the use of him as a symbolic representation of discipline and courage and other qualities of self, 
how does it work? And another person, and I was explaining that because it inspires me. It allows me to act from that inspiration. And yeah, Gandhi, yes, absolutely. How that got, well, I love what he did. Okay, would you suggest to use OCO orders to avoid impulse taxes? Yeah, you can. Um, ultimately, we're going to have to learn how to deal with ourselves. You know, it's just like these mechanical systems where it says it takes all the emotion out and really good traders snicker at me and say, Randy, that's a good way to just bleed slowly. Learning, learning to be highly impartial, learning how to manage the self in the midst of trading eventually is completely necessary to become, becoming a competent, successful trader. There's really no way around it. How your, your entry and exit uh, strategies are going to be about around how you learn to deal with uncertainty and the fear associated with it. It's just that I find that most traders, what's happening in trading, their problems in trading are also associated with the problems outside of trading. And from my standpoint, this is all about growing and becoming the human being that you can become. And I look at it as trading leaves you no choice. It's going to show, it's going to open you up and it's going to show you exactly where the problem is. That's what I like about it. And it gives you the opportunity of doing something about it. Okay. My friends, I have thoroughly enjoyed my time with you. I, I have enjoyed, I'm very thankful that you were here and have devoted the time and energy. And my hope is as in your journey into trading, first, I really truly hope that it's prosperous for you. And what I really hope is that you find the deeper, deeper joy in being that can be found by having trading as a way of exposing all your junk so that you can work on it. And in that journey into your prosperity, if I can help you, I really would have, I would be honored to have the opportunity. So check out my website. And also, again, I give thanks to FX Street. Understand, these people are making this possible. This is showing you what kind of outfit you're working with here, that they're, edu they're educating and they're educating on a very deep level. This is the mind that we're talking about that trades your methodology. And they recognize how powerful it is that this is the piece that you have to get. 80% of your trading is right here. So, friends, I really appreciate it. I wish you well, and have a great trading day.